voice there. Ooh! 2017 is over and now it's time to talk about the big banana in the sky, the best comics for 2017. If you have no idea what this is about, well you haven't been watching our channel for long enough, you should go back and watch our very first, well actually I think it was our second, uh, comics for 2006. 15. It's been a messy year for comics and the comic book industry. As many of you know, I'm a full-time comic book gal. I work at this store, All Star Comics Melbourne, the most magical comic book store in the world. Uh, and it's been a tough time, not just for us, but all comics retailers because of Marvel and DC and the oversaturation of comics within the market, but also the availability of things for you guys to do that involve comics that aren't comics. TV shows, movies, people have stopped coming into stores to buy comics and just watching the TV series of Luke Cage, Punisher, going to see the film's Avengers. A lot of people are seeing it as they don't need to read the comics because they know the story. And that I don't think that's right at all. I don't. I think that couldn't be more wrong. See, we originally thought when this all kind of happened that it would feed uh, and get bigger and bigger, more people getting interested in comics, more people, you know, watching the movies and wanting to learn about Thor. But we find no, they've, they've learned about Thor. They know yeah. that story, so they're not choosing to read anymore. So it's really dangerous for the comic book industry right now, and that's where we come in. Mm. So we're going to talk about the best comics for 2017, but you're going to notice that not one of them is from the big two, Marvel or DC, because they have a lot to answer for, with mm. multiple crossovers. Mm. Um, this was the year that I actually stopped reading comics. I, I used to read them every day. I used to read a new like new trade every couple of days, and now this year, I think DC, with their twice monthly, really shot themselves in the foot, because I would go to my pull list, and I would... Get it out, and there will just be so many yeah, books Yeah, you're there. overwhelmed. And that's what we found around the whole industry, that M Marvel and DC, whereas DC had the market, if you look at sales, they've had the market every week, they're the highest seller, but it's not always by... Uh, it being the best book, but purely because people feel attached to a character. Mm. Marvel are trying to refocus things to classic get, characters. Get those or, like those uh, audiences from the film. So you've got the uh, Marvel taking from the cinematic universe, but also the cinematic universe taking from classic Marvel. Guys, this year, 2017, is the year of the indie, the year of the obscure, and the year that you should maybe go on a little trip boop, 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 away. From Marvel and DC and try something new. Maybe there's some other interests mm. for you out there because just cause the big two are failing you and failing many of us, it doesn't mean the comics are dooms. It means that it's time to give some of those smaller creators time to rise up. Mm. Yes? Yes. So let's talk about our favourite comics. My first book is by Chihiro Ishizuka and it's called Flying Witch. I have four of these volumes that have now recently been translated. This originally came out in 2013 over in Japan, but I only got a wind of this, a gusty wind that came through this year, blowing with it the Flying Witch. It is about Makoto, who is a teen witch. She's just beginning her training. A lot of people tell me that it is like Kiki's delivery service. However, she doesn't deliver delicious breads, uh, but she does make dreams come true. And she's a delightful lady. She's moved to a small rural town to live with her cousin, uh, and they hang out, and she begins to toil her garden to grow wonderful fruits and veggies and things she needs for her magic. It's pretty much a slice of life comic paired with a witch comic. It's got beautiful, beautiful art. I especially like the panels around the rural city. Um, there's a lot of like power lines hanging over things and beautiful shots of her garden. And I really, really like her cat that comes along for the ride with her. So I am getting really into manga lately. I'm finding I'm reading more manga than most um, American style comic books. I don't know why, but that's where I've ended up this year. Next, I wanted to talk to you about my favorite mini series of the year. It's Brave Chef Brianna by uh, Sam Sykes, Selena Espiritu, and Sarah Stern on coloring. This is a charming four part mini series from Boom Comics, all about Brianna, whose family has a legacy of cooking. Her dad's very, very famous. He's going to leave his legacy to one of the many children that he has, only one female out of his whole family of children and so the person that's going to get his entire legacy his life's work is the person the child that opens the most successful restaurant her and all her brothers go out and start their own restaurants and she decides to open hers in monster city where which is a bad plan 
flour is banned, human food is banned, so how is she gonna open a restaurant when she can't actually bake anything? My favourite part of this whole entire comic, if you will please help me here, is this page. This very first page in which we see Brianna baking a cake for the very first time and the beauty and the simplicity of this and the beautiful kind of fading coloured backgrounds to really focus in on her and her cake and how frustrated she is about herself. I really really enjoyed all the food she baked, I enjoyed all the mythical creatures that she meets up with and I was absolutely devastated to learn that Boom did not continue this four part series. Uh, it does finish up really nicely though and if you were lucky enough to get issue one uh, it had a chalkboard on the back so you could actually write a little recipe on the back which I thought was really cool. Um, so if you love any kind of cooking show or cooking food related comic you're gonna love it. It's sweet, it's charming uh, and there's a little bit of romance in amongst all the cool foods and monsters. Right so I didn't read many comics this year but one of the books that I did really get into and I binged all that were available and they're still coming out in 2017 so I think they count is I Am A Hero. But it's our video you can you can say any book. I you can want. say whatever it's I our want. Video. Akira, best book. <laughs> best book of the year. Yeah, Akira. Just for oh, year. The, Akira. The, the hardcover box set came out. The hardcover box set of Akira, if you can put it here. Best best book. Best best book of the year. Ever. Anyway. <laughs> so uh, I'm a Hero is about a struggling manga artist named Hideo. And after the failure of his uh, first comic series. What's the uh, comic series called? It's called Uncut Penis. And he didn't commit to it, and so it was discontinued. And so he's living with that failure. And so the really interesting thing about this is, one, first and foremost, it's a zombie comic. And the reason why I really, really enjoyed it was that he is somewhat of a paranoid schizophrenic. And so as everything is unfolding, he's not sure where the line between reality and his imagination, his hallucinations, really, really is. And so he has, a, he has a gun, and I think a lot of the best horror movies and the best horror comics are written with restrictions. It's like the great Raymond Chandler uh, tried to write crime stories without a single gun. And this this is no different, and that's why it's so masterful, is that he has a gun, he doesn't want to use it because if he offloads his, his rifle, maybe the Rifle Association of Japan will take away his weapon and therefore he'll ruin it for everyone and no one will be allowed guns. And so there are these great little instances throughout the whole comic where he has to make a decision and is trying to be the be the man. It's all about um, gender hierarchy in Japan as well. And it's not just that. It's a lot of the great horror movies are like Night of the Living Dead, which is about the, the evil within people. You've got Dawn of the Dead, which is all about how people are zombies. And then you've got Day of the Dead, which is about zombies becoming people. And this is, this is no different. You've got people uh, reverting back into their drone-like state as they're turning into zombies. So if you're a fast food worker, you would start like rattling off about upsizing fries and things like that. <laughs> I'd just be talking about comics. Yeah. You'd be talking about bagels. Yeah, and it, it's one of those really interesting books that has so many twists and turns that you never know where it's going to go. And the array of characters that just keep on popping up and getting knocked off all around him while this guy who's a, who sees himself as a complete failure is somehow getting through by the skin of his teeth. And as this year has been absolute utter hell for us, it's just, it really got me through. And it's just a really interesting read. So if you, if you love horror comics and want something that's, again, like your books, a little more down to earth and a little bit more realistic... I don't think you can get any better than this. If you can't tell, I enjoy all ages comics about having a nice time. And this is no different. It's Crafty Cat and the Crafty Camp Crisis by Charisse Mercil Harper. I'm pretty sure I butchered that name. This is the sequel to Crafty Cat, uh, the amazing Crafty Cat, which I didn't pre-order and therefore it sold out and therefore I never got to read. You and were still, devastated. I was devastated. That's why you pre-order your comics, people, because even gals that work at comic book stores miss out because they're silly and they don't pre-order. Uh, I missed out 
out on Doomsday Clock Hot Tip because they didn't pre-order. Fun fun facts with kids. Anyway, Crafty Cat and the Crafty Cat Crisis is all about a young girl called Birdie and she is a delight and she enjoys crafting. And her and her best friend Evan are all set to go to craft camp on school holidays. She's so excited. She's packing her bag. She's got all her pens and pencils and pom-poms and googly eyes and hot glue gun sticks. Uh, and she's getting ready to go. And then she puts on her how costume. Does, how does she do that with all the furry paws? Well, that's the point is that she turns into Crafty Cat. It's like, I'm Kaz, but I turn in to Nerdbegger. 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 You know, like she becomes Crafty Cat. So she kind of turns into this little cat character that enjoys crafting. However, upon arriving at the craft camp, she finds out that the school bully, if you want to find the grumpy picture of the school bully for me, uh, is also at the craft camp. And she can't understand why a school bully, someone so horrible that doesn't enjoy doing anything, oh, what a bully. Look at that anger. Uh, <laughs> would be at the same camp as poor crafty cat. And so the comic is about learning to deal with bullies by showing compassion and love and moving forward in your day and ignoring them. Uh, it's also about craft. And the best thing about it is the things at the back where you can actually make the exact crafts that they make in the book. And this is my favorite. It is called a moody monster badge. So when Crafty Cat is having a bad day, she comes up with the idea to have this little thing where you turn around the face to show what kind of monster you're feeling that day to portray how you're feeling. Cause perhaps the bully that day is just grumpy cause they don't know how to express their feelings. It's a delight, teaches you how to deal with bullies and you get to craft along. Ah, uh, guess what? I like all ages books. And so guess what? Here's another one. Ooh, it's called All's Fair in Middle School, it is by Victoria Jamison, who did one of my all-time favourite comics called Roller Girl. She focuses mainly on friendships and friendships between females and the different forms that they take. This book is all about Imogen. Now, Imogen's family is a little bit different than the other kids at school. Uh, she is very involved in the, uh, what do you call them, medieval fairs medieval fairs and she likes old Tommy things like pointed shoes and swords and battling knights and her family works at the does she does she larp yes yeah, she larps oh, yeah she's working her yeah. way up to be a fighty stick person whatever you call that uh, and her whole family works there at the fair and she really loves it there she loves the people there she loves the life she loves singing songs with them and has a great time however when she gets to school guess what all the girls are cool sassy teen girls and they wear fashionable clothes and there she is her family doesn't make a lot of money working at this fair and she dresses a little different talks a little different likes different things are you seeing a theme here yes I really enjoy comics about young children that are a little bit different than the other kids because that was me anywho so she goes to school uh, and quickly learns that there's no good and evil that these people that are a little bit different than her aren't evil sometimes they may bully her but that's okay you know what because kids think that other things that are different are things to be picked on but they're not because sometimes as Imogen learns you too can make a mistake and your whole family won't talk to you because your mistake was so bad you're not perfect they're not perfect Everybody makes mistakes. And so that's what this comic is about. You know what books I like? Books about cats and friendship. And this is called Cat Boy. It's by Benji Nate. It's all about a young woman named Olive who is very fashionable, has very adorable clothes, and her cat Henry who one day just turns into a person. Or like a people cat. A cat people. A cat... A p cat that... Cat. Cat. Cat that has long legs. Cats sometimes have long legs. He becomes a bit more human. How's that? And uh, guess what? There's no clothes for cats, peoples. So he just takes Olive's clothes and half the book is just adorable pictures of their outfits, if you will. Look at this adorableness there. The fashion pages. And every time he gets dressed, he wears cute little outfits. And um, it's just a delightful tale of these two hanging out, going to parties. But there are some cat people mishaps when uh, <laughs> Henry invites Olive along to a party one day and uh, thinking that it's going to be a cool people party because Henry has made a lot of cool human friends. No, it's a cat party behind a dumpster. And uh, <laughs> they serve cool rotten fish and everyone's a cat. So you can imagine the shenanigans that the two get up to. I, I only ordered one book this year. <laughs> Um, there's and, a lot to read in yeah, my part. Yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a lot to read. Like Kaz brings home so many books each week that uh, if I want to read something, I'll just read some, one of those. Anyway, so the one that caught my eye that I had to order from a small press over in Japan, which is Black Hook Press, which is doing some of the most exciting indie publishing, I think, to the, like at the moment. Yeah. I think they're doing some incredible really stuff. Really unique tales. Great translations as well. Uh, really passionate stuff. But anyway, there's another artist 
called James Harvey, who I've been following for many years. He wrote one of my favorite books of the past decade, which is Masterplasty, which Image published as this huge big book. And, and I, refu- I refused to pick it up because it was like such, it's the size of a newspaper. And I was like, where are we going to put this on our shelf? Yeah, anyway, Fun so uh, James Harvey published through Black, Black Hook Press this year, Mouth Baby. Which is about this uh, baby who is born from these this t- this couple here, and uh, through her throat. So they they get frisky one night and then have a mouth baby, and this baby is not your average baby. He is a he, he grows looks like a, a rude. He's a yeah, rude baby. He's a he's a rude, rude guy. He smokes copious amounts of cigarettes and. Uh, show the yeah. Show so her this is the the, the birthing scene. There we are. Anyway, it's just like the the art and the colors and everything is. I just love the color so palette. So beautiful, it? but this uh this mouth baby is a uh, rude dude. Yeah, he's a bit of a um, sociopath and uh, very very rude and lazy, and all he does is take selfies and uh, just kind of get drunk and call, <laughs> cause cause. But mayhem. he's a baby, and he's like constantly just like, "Mom, get my alcohol for me," and just. Yeah, making a nuisance while the the mum and dad are constantly just walking around naked. Um, but anyway, like there are just like little hidden elements to the book that I love so much. Little details like there's a there's a Dreamcast hidden in there, and I don't know if your followers know how much we love the Dreamcast. Well, okay, maybe because I have a week off now. Maybe we'll make your Dreamcast video. We yeah. can even do that today. If you yeah. Want. So it's primarily just about a couple who make a mistake and then have to work together to manage that mistake and kind of deal with a problem that arises, but it doesn't turn out the way you'd think. They don't learn anything from this. (laughs) They just kind of end the situation. (laughs) Right. I think of all the things he did with Bart Kira and this in 2017. Oh, that's all making sense now. I know who it is. Yeah, so he's the, like, Bart Kira was actually his brainchild, which is an amalgamation of Simpsons and Akira. You should check that out. That's good. Which is great. So, yeah. My my number one pick of the year Liam's was banana. Mouth Baby. Liam's banana my in the banana. sky. My banana. My banana. Hey, banana, right? And now it's time for my big banana in the sky. Beep, poop, beep, up. Oh, it's got a banana hat. If you're wondering what big banana in the sky is, I don't know. We that's have just, no idea. That's just what I said the first time we filmed this here. So big banana in the sky. Pew, pew, pew. Is it because we had bananas? No, no it just came out of nowhere. We didn't have bananas. We filmed it at home. It came remember? out of nowhere. Anyway, it means best, yeah. number one best book of the year. And here it is. It's My Brother's Husband by Gengora Tagame. Now, Tagame is very well known in the LGBTQI community for drawing very sexy male porn. Pornographic comics, wonderfully fun, sexy books, big burly men all tied up in rope. And this is a little bit of a step away from that. It still has very masculine big men in it, but it's it's primarily focused on a discussion about homosexuality within Japan. It is amazing. It is heartfelt. It made me cry, made me laugh. And it made me really think about how things are different over there than they are here and the many... Uh, chances people have here compared to in Japan so far. Uh, So this is all about Mike. Now Mike was married to a lovely man over in Canada and unfortunately his partner passed away and he's decided to go and meet his partner's brother in Japan uh, and his name is Yaichi. Please excuse if I say that wrong. Uh, And Yaichi is a single dad and he has a young daughter named Kana who is this girl here. This is Mike. This is Yaichi. So he goes over to learn about his brother and his brother's history his brother had a falling out with Yaichi um, and they weren't very close you know from once he came out and that wasn't because of that it's just things changed within everybody's lives he had a kid his brother moved away uh, so it's a really really interesting book with the most incredible art uh, I'm just going to start off with this beautiful illustration inside the cover of the sweet bread that he buys for the young kana um, it's really adorable throughout it and there's just some really heartfelt slice of life type scenes of people just enjoying food together um, but the most important part of this is the discussions between Mike and young Kana and about homosexuality within Japan and it's done through the eyes of a child so it's that kind of childlike questions that are so blunt I feel like everyone should read this Liam you mm. read it I couldn't I did, get enough and of there it. were like certain moments in there that really stuck out to me and like 
I've it's one of those things that like I've revisited in my mind a lot of times since reading it and like especially the scene where he first comes to the door like that scene of like that first instance of him not wanting to acknowledge the the circumstance not wanting like not seeing his relationship as a real relationship and yeah. all, all those kind of thoughts and it's it's just a, it's a really tough book to read and for one that's like disguised under this level of uh like you you look at the book and it's so so sweet and it's slice of life and it's so beautifully illustrated that there are just there are such heavy themes yeah it has here. a massive conversation mm. in there but it's done with sweet moments in yeah. between and you yourself begin to maybe come up with your own ideas and things that you want to discuss with your friends and family mm. and loved ones. I cannot recommend it enough. It's my big, big banana in the sky. And in Japan, we're going to Japan this year. Oh, my God, we're going to Japan this, this year. year. That's so weird to say. I'm hoping to find some of Tagami's more pornographic work uh, <laughs> while we're there. So that's what's up. Uh, I've had a wonderful beginning to our 2018. Mm. It is currently not even lunch. It is... 10 o'clock in the morning. Is it seriously only 10? Yeah. <laughs> we it's have not, no it's life. not even 10. We it's, went to bed at 10.30 last night. Yeah, yeah about 10.30. Yeah. We, we finished watching uh, Jason Goes to Hell, and then we looked at the clock and we're like... Let's just go yeah. to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we were very much done yeah, with last year. 2017. See ya, later yeah. 2017. See ya. And please let us know in the comments down below what you loved this last... Oh, man, sweet. What you loved last year. Done. What, what do you like? How do you feel about? Um, oh, it's not good. It's not good. It's not. I, I just. It's not good. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, that tastes very bad. 